Welcome to today's video. This is a series of videos on electric vehicle chargers. And this video here in particular is about the Sync EV charger. This video will be particular interest not only from installers, but right down to end users. I'll be showing you what's in the box, how the apps work and what various features they have. Because it's extremely important that you pick the right charger from day one because you're going to be stuck with this little gadget for years and years to come and if we don't have the features we want we might end up ripping it out and replacing it with another one if you're looking for an installer of an ev charger like this one or any other ev charger then check out rightcharger.co.uk forward slash ev nick well, there's a link there to find your local installer to install a local EV charger for you. Now, before we get to unboxing it, let's talk about some of the obvious things that we can see straight away. First of all, it's only available in black. Now, this here is an untethered version. They do have a tethered version coming in a couple of weeks after this review. This is also a single phase unit. They do have a three phase unit, again, coming later on this year. So that's going to be slightly bigger than this unit, so I can't really comment on it too much, but they do have a three-phase version coming, which will have to be slightly bigger. Now, this unit has built-in DC protection RCD systems. It also has pen fault detection built straight into the unit, so there's no additional pen fault systems that you need to install into the fuse board for customers or earth rod arrangements that you need to put in. You'll notice here there's a little RFID symbol, and that's because it comes standard with RFID, so you can start and stop the charge with an RFID card if you wish. Now straight away from the box you'll notice it's very small, it's very bright and vividly green in your face and all the tech specifications written on the box, nice and easy to see. This is a one phase 32 amp version, uh, obviously non-tethered version. They have three year guarantees, it's capable of doing loads of smart technology which we'll go into further in this video. But let's, let's open it up, let's have a look inside what it looks like. Straight away looking at it, it is very 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 similar looking to what we would refer to as an EO Mini. Very sort of similar boxing, and that's because EO and Sync Energy have used the same kind of off-the-shelf waterproof box. So this box they're using is basically an off-the-shelf waterproof box that they've drilled a hole into and put all their gubbins inside. Now also in the box we have uh, an install, uh, insulation guide, and then important notice for the electrician. There is no user manual with this one at all, so there's uh, nothing for me to chuck away that I don't need to read anyway. So saving on paper, obviously most companies these days do publish their user manuals directly on the website. And to be honest, they should be simple enough just to use straight out the box. Now you can see obviously this is a type two connection on the front, the standard type two connection. You can see here it's got an RFID symbol because it's capable of RFID. This unit that I've got has also got a mobile SIM card built into it and also it's Wi-Fi chip because it can communicate by Wi-Fi. Now we've opened it up, one thing to worth mentioning, when I flip it over to the front, you can see that these things are just basically a bit ugly. There is bongs in here to cover them up, bongs, bongs, whatever you want to call them to cover them up. They're in there. In here you've got the RFID card for tapping onto the front of the unit. You've got a grommet for if you're back feeding it, uh, bottom feeding it to basically so it's waterproof. Then you've got the various waterproof, waterproof washers. Unfortunately, in this unit that I've been provided, there is no screws to, to bolt it to the wall, which is a little bit annoying, but some, some engineers might prefer that because they might prefer to use stainless steel fixing so you don't get rust going down the outside of your wall. But otherwise, it's a very compact unit inside. Now, unlike the EO Mini as current, this unit does not need an earth rod installing. It does not need a separate pen fold device because it's all built in to the device. All this device here has a special chip located somewhere down in here that basically allows it to operate in a safe manner on standard PME earth systems. So you don't need to install additional earth rods if you're an installer. The only comment I'd make that's slightly annoying, well, two things. First of all, I prefer Wago blocks, but screw terminals are pretty standard across most, most companies and charge points because they're cheaper, uh, especially around this price point. But also, my, my biggest issue, and, I, and I've told uh, Sync Energy that, you know, that they, do, they could do with improving this, you've got the earth connection here, and obviously the, uh, the neutral and live here. And if you look, 
that these plug sockets are identical. There's no slits out of them. There's, there's nothing different. And then here on the actual part that goes on, you know, with all the tech, this terminal here and this terminal here are the same. You can just plug them straight in. Now there's no marking on the on the motherboard. Uh, there's no sorry no motherboard. There's no marking on the PCP. There's no marking anywhere to say which one's the earth, which one's live and neutral. Now Sync Energy have assured me that if your engineer hasn't watched the install video and has done it incorrectly, that plugging in the wrong one will not damage the unit. Uh, but it is a bit of a pain if you plug it in the wrong and then you have to unscrew it and replug it back in. But again, uh, like a lot of these units, you can install the back plate first connect all the services and electronics up, and then connect the front panel, which I think is quite a good idea. There's a couple of charge points that you'll see later on in the reviews that these terminals are permanently connected and they're dangling with the weight of the unit, front of the unit, which I think is a bit, a bit annoying, but this unit doesn't have that. It does have that option there. I just think that they could do with sorting this part out. Now, another thing to notice down here is there's an ethernet connection. Now, this unit is capable of doing Wi-Fi. So you can do Wi-Fi, but it also has got an Ethernet plug straight in there. So if you want to, if you've got bad Wi-Fi where you are, or you want to use power line adapters, etc., you can just plug straight into there with a power line adapter or an Ethernet connection to get a physical connection. Again, this unit has also got a 3G SIM card in it, so you can pretty much install it anywhere. You don't have to have Ethernet. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. You could just go for a mobile phone signal. So you've got three options of connectivity. Now this other plug here. Uh, I think it's an RJ45 from memory. This is for a CT clamp, this is for load management. So you have to buy their CT clamp because it's got special software in their CT clamp. But it means that if you have two free chargers or a low amp fuse, you can load manage it so it can the charger will know that there's a high load and it will step down the charger's actual charge rate for you. <laughs> Now from an installer's point of view, one thing to note, don't leave too much slack in the back of the cable of this unit because there's not much room to play with in the back of these units and therefore you might not be able to fasten it up and tighten it up once you're ready. So don't leave too much cable slack inside the unit. I have brought in a CAT6 cable into this back of the unit and you could use it for networking, but for this I've used it for the fuse protection, CT clamp ex to extend it. So I've got a CT clamp in the main incoming supply that's extended through this CAT6 and terminated both ends using RS-22, which is a bit of an awkward, weird plug size to use. Um, I, I much would have preferred that they used a more standard protocol, maybe RJ45. There is an RJ45 in there that can be used for network connections if you can't get any Wi-Fi in here, but this unit here has a mobile SIM card built in so it can communicate by mobile if there's mobile signal in the area as well. As an installer, you're going to have to connect to the Wi-Fi of this unit so it has its own Wi-Fi station, connect to it, and in your instruction manual that came with the unit, there is a HTTP, basically an IP address for this unit's login page where you'll go to log into the unit and set up all the engineer settings. Now at the moment, the only way of changing the Wi-Fi setting in this unit is by the engineer settings. I've been assured by Sync EV that that will be added to, to the customer side of the app very, very shortly, because obviously if you change broadband providers, that will need to be done. The other thing that's in the installer side of the IP login, the, the settings menu for the installer, is the fuse protection. Now, it's standardly set at 60 amps. If you've got the CT clamp installed in here and installed mainly, if it's plugged in, it will automatically be set at 60 amps. If you need to change that for any reason to either a low or higher fuse amp protection, then you need basically to go into the installer app and change that. Now there is no access for the customer to change that because if you're installing a fuse protection, the last thing you want is your customer messing around with that. Now the customer app is called Sync EV. Very easy to find on the app store and you'll need to download it as a customer and basically create an account, your usual email address and login addresses. Very, very simple to set up. Once you've got the unit set up, you have to then set up this charger into your unit. And to do that, there'll be an RFID card with a QR code on it. Scan that QR code with your phone, and that's it. Charger's all synced up. If you need the security code, it will be written on this card. And if you need the actual codes because the QR code's not working, all the rest is written on this card. 
There's also a QR code on the side of the unit as well, which we can explain how that may work in, in a minute. Once all that's set up, you have the option of adding a payment option on the app. Now, the reason for this is Sync EV will eventually have a network of accessible charge points like this for maybe commercial customers, or if you want to make your charger accessible, and people could then use their RFID cards or their Sync EV app to start your charger and pay you for using that charger or you could even make it public accessible and free if you wanted so there is an option that the sync ev app will basically have a network of, of publicly accessible commercial chargers or even workplace chargers where they'll centrally bill you and sync ev will will handle all the back-end payment systems obviously there'll be a charge introduced for that but the point is it's all ready to go in this unit as you get it. Now, there's a couple of things that you can do in the advanced settings in the app, and one of them is changing the ampage. And you can change the amps right down to six amps, and you might want to do this if you had solar and you wanted to just match the export that you're doing and producing in ampage during that time of the day. So you can do that. There is obviously the CT clamp we've got in here for fuse protection, and they have got an option with two CT clamps in, in this where you'd fix two CT clamps, one to your solar and one to your fuse. And you could do solar diversion like some of the other chargers. They're also looking at an option of using just the one CT clamp instead of fuse protection, using it for just basic solar output. Hopefully that's coming soon and I've been assured by, by them that they are working on it and it is coming very very soon now they have a couple of options for changing the way the scheduling works in this and what i quite like is it's quite easy to schedule a time charge on this and it's quite easy to do it via their app they have disabled mode which is basically turning it off they have a standard mode where it'll just start when you plug it in and they also have the option of setting an off peak and on peak tariff timer so you can set when your power goes off and on cheap Cheap. So if you're on Octopus Go where you get five pence per, per kilowatt electricity, link down below in my description if you're thinking of joining Octopus, that will allow you to basically set the, the cheap off-peak rates that you're currently getting between those times. It doesn't currently deal with Agile, but this is all firmware based, it's talking to the internet all the time. There is no option or no reason why they wouldn't be able to eventually integrate Octopus's API for Agile and make it work. And I have been told by the developers of this app that they are wanting to go into that part of smart energy of total dynamic changing of power and the unit can do it so I hopefully that will be coming soon now the other thing that they can do on this timing part of the app which is quite clever is you can set how many kilowatts you want to add over a given time period so not only can you set the off peak on and off timer but you could also say I only want to add 10 kilowatts I only want to add 12 kilowatts and the advantage of this is you can have more versatility of when you want this unit to, to charge and stop charging so if you know that you're only wanting to use 10 kilowatts and the grid's quite dirty at that time at night you can just add what you need now a couple of issues with the app that i'll go over basically listing my, my biggest issues with it at the moment currently you can't change the wi-fi password on the user app you need to use the installer system you currently can't do firmware updates by the user app, but Sync EV can push them through. They push one through on this charger. And third of all, you have no control over the pre-programmed RFID card that's in the charger. It's just pre-programmed to start the charger and you can't turn it off from starting the charger or, or just make it charge all the time. Now, Sync EV have assured me that all three of these issues that I have are coming in their app update, which should be released pretty much as this video comes out or a week after this video comes out but they have assured me that all these issues will definitely 100 percent be fixed you'll be able to do firmware updates yourself on the app you'll be able to do the programming of these cards yourself and changing your wi-fi they have assured me they're doing it so in summary this is a small discrete unit and despite its tiny size and looking like some of its competitors it bulks loads of technology that its competitors haven't been able to squeeze into its tiny form factor it's not the best looking charge point it's not going to win any fashion awards but because of its small discrete size you'll barely ever see it in fact my wife's commented that out of all the units we've had units this size units this look are the ones that she'd be happy to live with on the side of the house she's not a big fan of the more bulkier more stylish units she much prefers the unit to be discreet unseen and unheard and that's exactly what this unit will fit now if you're looking to have a sync ev charger fitted on the side of your home then check out right charge 
www.co.uk forward slash EV Nick. If you want a charger, they're the people to go to to get one fitted. They will find a list of local installers to find you the best price. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to check out the series of videos about electric vehicle chargers that are coming on my channel. And thank you very much and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.